Hello everyone, compliments of the season. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year in advance. It's so awesome to be able to do this with us today. Uh, I feel so blessed. I'm so looking forward to having a wonderful time with us all. If you can see and hear me, kindly just, you know, uh, drop a message on the chat. Let me know that you can see me, that I'm audible, and that I uh, you can see me and you can hear me. Woo! 2023. Awesome. God has been super awesome, super awesome, super awesome. I mean, God has been super awesome, beautiful. Oh, Debbie, compliment of the season. Yes, you can see and hear me. Hello, everyone. It's such a pleasure to be here. I mean, let me just adjust my screen a bit. Yeah. Can you see me and hear me? Awesome, awesome. So I am audible. You can see me and you can hear me. Hello, everyone. We are live. Tell your friends that we are live. Send messages out. Send reminders out. We're just going to spend a few minutes together, you know, just to... Uh, prep for 2024. I know a lot of us have probably attended, you know, seminars, programs, meetings, lives like this, and you probably are loaded already, you know, for 2024. And you're wondering, you know, let me just, let me just see what Pimo has to say. I probably wouldn't be say anything new per se. So possibly for some of you, it's just going to be a reminder of some sort. And for some of you, it's going to be a wake up call. And for some of you, it's actually going to help you navigate starting the new year. Hello. Hello. Oh, my darling, Pastor Devola. Nice to see you. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. Thank you guys for joining. We are live. Thank you, my darling sister, Lara. I can see you. Thank you for joining. We are live, 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 live. Yes, we are live. I am so happy. I mean, it is the 29th. Is it the 29th? Yeah, the 29th day of the last month of the year 2023. I mean, where else? For some of you, you probably are at work. Some people are in the market shopping, last minute shopping. And I know that there are crazy sales happening all over the world, UK, US, Canada, Nigeria right now. You know, crazy sales have 50%, 75%, 80%, 90% sales. And the shops and the malls are crowded. It's a gimmick, oh guys. Don't go and let them chop all your money. Hello, Dr. Ifeo Luadada. Thank you for joining. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And also, thank you uh, for all the congratulatory messages I've been receiving since yesterday and successfully passing my driving test. I mean, <laughs> I will save that gist for one of my conversations with people, you know, uh, probably in the new year. I mean, I need to share my experience with you. Guys, you need to hear my experience. Honestly, like, what is it? Is it not a move car? You know, because I'm typing, I couldn't really pour out everything. Like from my first exam to the second. Funny enough, I did my theory once and I passed. Like passed so well. So, you know, I'm like, what the heck? What's, what's this big deal about driving? Like <laughs> the one that beats me is the palpitations you get once the driver, the examiner is just next to you. Like you just, you have to just start racing and you're like, ah, What's going on here? What's happening? <laughs> but anyways, I am now an international driver. I can drive in Nigeria. I can drive in Canada. There's no way you want to carry me to now that I cannot drive. If you can pass the UK driving exam, take it from me. You can drive anywhere in this world. I used to say that if you can drive in Lagos, Nigeria, you can drive anywhere in this world. I take that statement back. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I thought so too, but coming to UK, Omar, hey, they showed me. They showed me. <laughs> they showed me. Ah, humbled me like this. Like I was humbled. I was really carrying my 15 years plus driving skills and navigating Lagos, crisscrossing over. When I got to this UK, I just humbled. By the second exam that the guy said, unfortunately, I said, I am not unfortunate in Jesus' name. <laughs> Back to sender. <laughs> The Nigerian we kicked in. But honestly, it was an experience. It was an experience. And, and 
till today, someone still came. My instructor just left some few minutes ago. He's still congratulating me. I mean, I'm collecting congratulations till like end of next year, Seth. I'm telling you, well, if you hear that somebody passed their UK driving driving test, please congratulate them well. Look, it's not the I can't even remember doing a driving test in Nigeria, honestly. He was a my husband's mechanic driver, <laughs> mechanic that taught me how to drive, and I entered road, you know. But here, you know, it was just so thorough. The whole preparation towards it, the day of the exam, I mean, sitting with an examiner for almost 40 minutes. Like 40, that 40 minutes would look like five, 45 hours. <laughs> like, when is this going to end? But I'm just grateful to God, honestly, that that is done and dusted with 2023. And then off we go in 2024. And I am going to be crisscrossing the whole of UK. And like I said, I'm coming to Nigeria. I'm driving to Nigeria. To come and do new year so meet me at the border however way my car will enter water we will drive it amen awesome 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 that is just to welcome all of you uh to say thank you for the congratulating messages on facebook on instagram on whatsapp thank you thank you thank you all right how has 2023 been for you guys has it been you can share it on the you know chat if you want to you know has it been for you i know it's been a lot of ups and downs for a number of people mixed feelings for those of us in uk a number of people got the unfortunately messages you know uh from the recruitment s agencies a lot of people you know prepared sent out cvs i mean someone told me he used to send out on the average about 100 cvs every day i'm like god like seriously you know that's another you know conversation on its own applying for jobs here in the uk in my short less than three years i've really learned a lot being in this country and i think it has really widened my horizon about life generally you know and one of these days i will be sharing with you my experiences but how has 2023 been for you oh someone said that on eagle's wings the hand of god carrying me i love that i love that on eagle's wings for me that has literally been also you know my testimony it has been god all the way i mean i haven't exactly been the best you know uh, as expected from god we do fall short at times you know so many things just calling our attention so many things you know uh you want to do but somehow the the vicissitude of life will just get in the way so i probably haven't have haven't prayed as much as I would have loved to. I probably haven't, you know, studied the word as much as I would have loved to. I probably haven't done so many things as I would have loved to. But in all, I look back and I'm truly, totally grateful to God for 2023. I see the hand of God every step of the way. I mean, this year, I released my second book, The Proverbs 31 Couple. I mean, that was a hit. And I'm truly grateful to God for that. The Envoy Nation, my family church here in the UK, I mean, we have taken steps by faith. We have grown in leaps and bounds. I mean, so many things have happened. I got an amazing job this year. Awesome things, honestly, awesome things. But beyond that, I'm just grateful for life. I'm grateful that my life is centered around God, that my life is centered in God and God is centered in my life. I mean, I'm just super grateful to God for that. Alero says it was a in season for me. Lessons speak as I went along. New God, the more building capacity and bringing uh, out the better, the better from me. I love that. I love that. I love that capacity building season. And when you go through that season of capacity building, you're enlarging your coast. Is because ha, plenty is coming. Is because God is preparing you you know, for, for harvest is preparing you for something awesome that is coming your way. 2023, how has it been for you? It's not too late. You can drop it in the chat if you want to. You never know. Your comment could encourage someone. Honestly, it might actually bless someone and help someone and encourage someone. But truly, I'm just grateful to God. I'm thankful to God. Uh, it's been It's been a journey. It's been a journey. I mean, when did we say Happy New Year? And here we are the last month, the last few days of the month, of the year, you know, getting ready to say Happy New Year. 
and and I'm just full of things. I'm full of full of things. I, I want to encourage someone. 2023 might not have been all that you hoped or dreamed or expected or planned or, you know, strategized it to be. But I want you to know that everything is definitely working out together for your good. Everything is working out together for your good. God is working it all out. It might not be clear. It might seem like there were delays. It might seem like there were disappointments. It might seem like, you know, there were just so many things that kind of like stood in the way. I mean, I don't even want to go into Nigeria to talk about the hardship, to talk about, you know, the, the way the dollar, the pounds and everything was just really going up and down and how a number of people even found it difficult to feed their homes and their families. But in all, we are grateful to God because when you go through a night season, it's an assurance that the next thing that comes right after that is the breaking of the day, is the breaking of the dawn. I mean, you're about to step into another day. The night doesn't go forever. Nobody experiences night forever. It will surely come to the breaking of the dawn at some point in time, and there will be morning. So congratulations, whatever it is you went through in 2023, see it that God is using it as a, uh, as, as a raw material in preparation for what he wants to do with you in 2024. I know for some people, oh, my da darling sister, Pastor Debola said, honestly, it's been a successful year. Glory to God. God fulfilled his promises to me. All glory to him. I'm so happy for that testimony. Thank you so much for sharing this with me. I mean, awesome, awesome, awesome. It has been God. I can see God, 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 God all the way. We, we can't but just thank him. That's just the truth. Because truly, however way it is, head or tail, we win. Head or tail. We win, however way it was, uh, um, uh, we, we experienced it. At the end of the day, God wins. He wins. He always wins. He's, he never loses. And once our lives is hidden in Christ, in God, then we are secure. Then we know that everything is working together for our good. And can I say that that everything does not mean only the things that you did right. Now, let me say that again. It says all things work together for good. Sometimes we become overly righteous to think that it is all the right steps we took and the right decisions we took and how we felt good about certain things that we do that is going to work out together for our good. No, the Bible says everything eventually works out together for your good. Everything. I mean, everything. Joseph reporting his brothers, that we could have looked at today and say, mm, Uncle, keep quiet. Why are you telling your, 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 your brother's issues to your father? See, now they've hated you. But at the end of the day, the hatred pro produced the righteousness of God. It produced the purpose of God. It pro produced the will of God at the end of the day. As a result of that hatred, he was sold to Egypt. He would never have woken up one morning and said, oh, I want to go to Egypt. It's not possible. Nobody does that. I mean, he had a coat of many colors. He was he was being treated like the, the shining sun amongst how many suns? You get that gist, you know. But then something had to happen. And it was that seemingly, you know, not too good decision that landed him in purpose. So all things, say to yourself, if you can't type it in the chat, say it, put your name and say, all things work together for mooring according to the purpose of God, because I love God, all things are working out together for my good. Put it in the chat box. Say, all things are working out together for my good. My 2023, trust me guys, and hear this, is connected to my 2024. My 2023 is connected to my 2024. It is not in isolation. I mean, sometimes you will even begin to realize that the reason you had to go through 2023 was be, is because of probably 2040. And then when you come into 2040, you are like, oh my goodness, I remember this happened in 2023. You didn't get the result in 2023, but trust me, it will begin to add up and make sense in the coming years. So sometimes some years, might not really be the year 
where you begin to experience certain fulfillment, as it were. But they are the foundation laying years. It is that season. That's why God is not an annual God. Calendars and dates were put there by we human beings to help us, honestly. Nothing wrong is needed. But God transcends calendars. He transcends New Year. He said to the children of Israel, in the midst of the year, start this day, mark it as the beginning of the year for you. So God can choose to begin a year for you. And in the same vein, in the same vein, guys, sometimes God is not going to give you anything fresh in January. He probably told you what he wanted to do with you in October. And so don't get too fixated on hearing something new, you know, something fresh. My year of, yes, sometimes, most times, yes, it comes like that. Just for guidance. But trust me, even whatever you hear at the beginning of the year, we still link to something he has told you, either in 2023 or some months ago, or probably the beginning of December. He started having certain conversations with you about the future and that future is not limited and boxed in 2024 it's probably the next five years of your life i'm telling you guys probably the next five years of your life i remember what he said to me 2021 while we were leaving before we left nigeria for the united kingdom and he said to me you know uh, what the next phase of my life would look like and trust me guys it's not about a one-year thing i'm still unraveling even almost three years after what he said to me in 2021. So guys, don't box God and don't box yourself. Don't get carried away religiously with that. Oh God, when you so much say God must speak to you, something will speak up, like my husband would say, something will speak, you know. So the important thing is understand that 2024 is a continuum. God is a God of process. He's working it all out. He's working it all out. So what he started with you probably in 2020, he's bringing it into completion in 2024. And so 2023 was very critical, you know, and that's why it seemed like he rocked the boat. That's why it seemed like there were storms. That's why it seemed like, you know, there was the, the wind came and everything. But because you had laid the foundation in 2020, no matter how strong the wind blew, it wasn't going to shake the foundation. And the house will stay firm on it. Are you guys getting me? So I'm here saying to you in advance, congratulations, because 2024 is already set in history. It's set in God. It's set in time with God, not in time with man. So we cannot be limited by the things we see or hear or perceive. Are you feeling me? Are you getting me? So yeah, let me just dive right in into what I have for us today quickly and hopefully lead us to make one or two prayers in preparation for 2024. Um, so I, I tagged it, how to begin. How do we begin the new year? The things I've said previously is also part of how to begin. But I'm just going to take us through about four points on how to begin. How do you begin something? How do you begin a new year? How do you start something new? How do you, you know, engage in a new phase, a new season, a new dimension? There's always a how to begin I mean, if we take a look at the life of Jesus, who is our foremost example, he is our for, forerunner. I mean, he's gone ahead of us to show us how these things can do. He's our perfect example. Before he showed up on the scene in regards to ministry, when he was about to begin, he had that Jordan experience. And I'm going to come to that. Don't let me jump ahead of myself. But I'm going to come to that in my second point, and you would understand what I'm trying to say. So how do you begin? How do you navigate a new year? There's a tendency to begin to make New Year resolutions, particularly with respect to diet. It's always the beginning of the year. Ah, I'm going to go on. And then some, some of us use, <laughs> some people use the whole fasting season, 
you know, to go on another diet exercise, which is okay, which is good, you know, because we've all, you know, indulged ourselves uh, during Christmas and during, you know, the New Year celebrations. And then, of course, most churches by the 2nd of January will start their fast. It could be 10 days, it could be 20 days, it could be 30 days, it could be 100 days, whatever it is. But I'm hoping that what I'm going to share with you today would lay the foundation for you and help you navigate that beginning, that start. Because starting is very, very important. How you start, how you begin, how you engage is very, very crucial to what is going to happen, you know, few months down the line, what is going to happen in another few years. So I'm not even just talking only about 2024. I'm talking about starting a new season with God. So how you start is very, very important. And that starts firstly with how do you perceive 2024? How do you perceive 2024. That's the first thing I want us to look at. How do you perceive 2024? How do you see it? What is 2024? What is a new year? How do you see it? Don't get caught up with the general notion of new year resolution. Don't get caught up with, you know, the, the, the vision board thing. Good. Nothing wrong with those things. But don't run those things without knowledge. Don't run those things because it's what is expected. Don't approach it religiously. Oh, we're going to engage in fast. And for some people, that fasting is just hunger strike. You're just following the motion. And that's why it seems like we don't get the results that we desire. No, you can't afford to do that. You can't engage 2024 religiously. I mean, this is one year where you should sit down and tell yourself, now let me sit down and even you know, reflect and, and look into this year strategically, look into this year spiritually. I don't want to run with the, yeah, your church can have that, you know, whole fasting and prayer and you're joining in, which is good, but make it personal. Aside from the general prayer meetings, personalize it, use it as a period also, you know, to, 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 to discover certain things too. Now, trust me, for some people, 2024, they've already received certain instructions about 2024 before 31st. And like I always say, 31st is too late to start receiving certain instructions for 2024. And it goes beyond my year of, okay, after someone has said, either your pastor, your mentor, or someone you look up to, or your, the ministry you're a part of, have said to you, my year of, for example, in the Envoy Nation, we've tapped 2024, our year of harvest. What does that mean to you? Personally, how do you take ownership of that year? It's a general thing that has been said to the entire church, but then how does, does you, how would you, Maureen, you know, Pimo, how would I, personalize it, make it my own. I need to settle down and begin to think in scriptures, ask myself, what is harvest? If God says it's my year of harvest, look through the, look into the, into the scriptures. What is he saying to me about harvest? What is harvest? What sort of harvest am I expecting? So don't just go with the bandwagon and say, oh, our year of harvest, our year of harvest. And then there's nothing personal. God isn't breaking it down to you. He said to them that the Holy Ghost will come. There's going to be that, you know, massive explosion. The Holy Spirit will come in the upper room. By the end of the day, it came on each of them as tongues of fire. Each person carried their fire. Each person carried their fire. Yes, there was a mighty rushing wound wind that filled the whole room, but each person carried his own fire. And each person spoke in other tongues. And everyone there had each of them speaking in their own language. So guys, you need to understand what is my own, well, how do I see 2024? What is God saying to me? For me, I know what God has said to, to, to us in the Envoy Nation. I know what God has said to us in Babes Redefined. 
And I know what God has said to me personally, what the year represents. How do you see the year? The first thing is a mind shift. You need to have a mind shift, a mind shift about entering into a new year, entering into a new season. What is that mind shift? That that year, that season has already been settled, finished, completed, scripted by God. And I think once you can have that understanding in your mind, it will liberate you. I mean, come on, you're coming into something that has already been sorted, that has already been prepared. I mean, it's not catching God on our words. It's not a year where God is running kitty kitty kata kata and saying, okay, ah, December, January, what are we doing for Pimo? Uh, March, what is the March for Pimo? Is it what Pimo will do, you know, in January that will decide what we'll do in March? It's scripted. Just as your life is scripted, 2024 is scripted. God has written the book. Is finished it. He knows the end of the story. He knows the beginning. He knows the in-between. It's scripted, guys. It's scripted. The year is scripted already. It's like a book. The author knows everything. If you ask me about Proverbs 31 couple, I can tell you because I wrote it. Jesus already wrote it. God already wrote the script for 2024. Come on. I mean, isn't that comforting to know? That's the first mind shift. That's the first mindset. That's how you need to see 2024. That is a year already scripted. I mean, my life is scripted. The year is scripted for me. Every detail. And God is a detailed God. Trust me, very detailed. I mean, Jesus said, I have come in the volume of books to do your will. He said, my own life has been scripted. I mean, you are prophecy fulfilled. 2024 is prophecy fulfilled. Your life is scripted. It's prophecy fulfilled. Say to yourself, 2024 is literally me fulfilling prophecy because that year has been settled even before I was born, before I was born, before I showed up on the scene. My 2024 is already written, completed, finished book. God had finished work on it. 2024, that's the first mindset. So when you know that, what is your role then? If it's been scripted, if it's been written, what's my role? You know the author. Come on. It's like someone coming to me and say, ah, Fimo, what is in chapter five of conversations with, um, with co uh, couple, uh, <laughs> Proverbs 31 couple? I can tell you because I wrote it. And so what, what ended the book? Can, can you tell me? I can tell you because I know what, what, I wrote it. The author knows everything. Sometimes when you have a book, you find that the author will give you what they call like a review or, you know, like a, you know, kind of like a, an overview of the book, but not the details. Why? Because they want you to flip through the pages. You need to read it chapter by chapter. A very good book, especially a storybook, each chapter connects with another chapter. Each chapter, when you finish, you know, it's like watching a series. You know, that's why I don't like series. I like it, but I don't, I, I just have to watch it only when I have luxury of time because I don't like the suspense. <laughs> and sometimes God does that with us. There's so much suspense. I you're like, God, come on, just take me to the last page. And he's like, no, walk with me. That's what he said to Abraham. He said, I've made you. He said to Abraham, showed him the end of the book. I've made you father of nations. He said, but you're going to walk with me. You're going to walk with me chapter by chapter. We're going to flip through the pages. You're not going to rush through it because if you rush through it, you are going to miss important bits. Don't rush through it. If you, you can't even rush through process. Sometimes we try to, but God will slow us down. Why? Because every chapter is important. Every chapter is so important. Process is key. There is no overnight miracle, guys. There is no overnight miracle. Anything that looks like an overnight miracle, something had gone in. They say Joseph slept as a prisoner, woke up as a prince. No, guys. 
It had been a 17 year or 13 years walk in the pipeline. Oh, David became king. No, guys, it had been almost 13 years walk in the pipeline. Esther became queen. No, guys, it had been a lot of work. So process, I said 2024 is prophecy fulfilled. It's fulfilled, but then God is now going to take you through the process. And so each and every day of the month, of the, of the months, of, of the week and of the month, God will begin to unravel. And every day sinking into the next. Every day sinking into the next. Every week sinking into the next. Every week sinking into the next until every month is sinking into the next month. Do not shortcut. Don't do shortcut. Don't do shortcut with God. Don't. Any food you microwave, you can't get the best of it. But when it's cooked, nicely done, well prepared, you enjoy it, you relish it while you're eating it. That's the first thing I need us to understand. Each page is linked to the other. Don't skip the pages. Is this, Your life is scripted. Jesus tried it at age 12. Through his mother and his father, he was sent back home. And he went through a process of grooming for 17 years. And when he showed up, we'll see as that takes me to my second point. But I really want us to understand this first point. Understand that 2024 is a settled, done deal year. It's prophecy fulfilled. You are coming in time to fulfill that prophecy. God is not running helter-skelter concerning you. It's not in 2024 he's beginning to think in his head, what will I do with you? Where is your life heading? He knows it. He knows it because he wrote it. And that's why we can depend on him. He's such a dependable God because he, he's, he's factored in everything. He's so reliable. I mean, anyone who doesn't know God or have God, I don't know how you live your lives. I honestly don't know how you live your lives. Excuse me. I don't know how you live your lives. Because, I mean, they say follow who no road. Hey, hey. Someone knows road, knows everything, the details, the turns, the corner. He knows don't take that road. He knows take this road. He knows this is where this is leading to. He knows where. Then I will now try to want to figure it out myself. He's figured it all out. I mean, he's figured it all out. It's not my headache to figure it out. My job is to turn the pages. And how do you turn the pages? By the leading of the Holy Ghost. That's how you turn the pages. By the leading of the Holy Ghost. Because it's scripted. So he can tell me what my January is meant to look like. What I'm meant to be doing. How much time I need to spend praying. How much time I need to study. Who I need to reach out to. Where I need to sow my seeds. He's the one because my January is connected to my October. What I do in January will affect my seed in October. So I need to get it right. I need to do it right. Every day I wake up and I say, I'm here to do your will. In the volume of books is written concerning me. You settled this. You scripted it. Glory to God. That's the first mind shift. That's the first thing that helps you as you begin. Understanding it. Let it settle in your mind. I mean, let it be clear in your heart and in your mind. That 2024 is a dumb deal. With God, it is settled. With God, it is finished. He already knows the end from the beginning. My life is secure in him. My life is scripted. And I'm just going to leave out the script. I'm just going to leave out the script. And I know that it's a beautiful script. Because the Bible tells me in Jeremiah that the thoughts that he has towards me, they are for good and not for evil. To give me an expected end. So I know without doubt that is ending in victory. That is ending in joy. That everything is going to work together for my good. Because he's a good God. He's mindful of me. What he writes, what he does, what he creates is good. There's nothing he's involved with that is not good. However way it turns, it is good. Glory to God. The second thing I want to say is that understanding, and I think I've said a bit of it, you know, in, 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 the, first, in the first point, you know, what you need or who you need the most 
at the beginning. So you read in Genesis chapter 1, one of my favorite scriptures, chapter 1, verse 1. It says, what happens at the beginning? What happens at the beginning? And what does Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 say? It says, in the beginning, God, before you now go to created the heavens and the earth. So any beginning, you are not beginning with God. I didn't say beginning. <laughs> Any beginning, you are not beginning with God. Ah, my dear brother and sisters, it will be hard <laughs> to follow the script because he is the one that owns the script. And he has to be there at the beginning. So it is a venture you want to take or you want to, you know, start with God. Genesis 1 1. It says, In the beginning, God. That's the first thing in the beginning. In the beginning, it has to be God. 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 Two of you have to be five and six. It, it cannot be optional. Is it that God or God? In the beginning, God. You begin with God. I beg you, please. It's not beginning with banga and fireworks. It's not beginning. Even if you are working, for some of you who work and do shifts, try and begin the year with God. Don't get carried away with the fest festivity of the season. Find time. Begin with God. In the beginning, God. And one of the things you begin to experience with God in the beginning is this creative ability. He says in the beginning, God created. So what you find in the beginning with God is that his creative ability comes to life. He now begins to mold, you know, to, 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 to whip, whip, you know, how, how do they say that in English? The tapestry of your life as he has written it. You know how you've, it's like you've written a book. They now want to translate that book into a movie. Ah, that movie is going to be a hit. Netflix has nothing on it. The movie of my life in 2024, Ah, come on, guys. Hollywood has nothing on it. Because the movie director, the movie author is God, Jesus, and the Holy Ghost. We are going on a ride. And he's the one that will not ensure that every moving part, every person needed, in this movie, because I know it's the script of your life, but you're going to be interacting with people. You're going to need human beings. You're going to need resources. You're going to need... So his, his creative ability comes to pass, come to play in the beginning. He begins to weave the tapestry of your life. He begins to, from your, the decisions he, he begins to put in your heart to make from January, he begins to connect the dots to ensure that you don't miss you know, it came in your life in, in March. And that came is going to be instrumental to, to your to your to your billion dollar breakthrough in September or in April. Can you guys see what I'm saying here? God in the beginning, he has to be in the beginning. Why does he have to be in the beginning? John chapter 1, verse 1 says, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And it says, All things were made through him, and without him was nothing made that was made. Come on, guys. What do you want to make? What do you want to frame in 2024? He's telling you here that everything is made by the word. Nothing was made that was made except what was made by the word. So when I say in the beginning, God, and I say he's putting on his creative ability, he's also saying that you live by the word. You have to make that conscious effort. You have to make that conscious effort and tell yourself, I'm beginning with God, I'm beginning with the word. My life is going to be dictated by the word of God. 
not by the dictates of the earth, of the world, of the systems, as they call it, or, you know, what, what, what do they call it now? Whatever it is, they call it. No, not by the dictates of the economy. I mean, imagine God allowed what was going on around him to dictate to him. You think after he created the heavens and the earth and there was void and darkness, he would do anything again? No, the Bible says in the because he knew how he started. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Scripted. Even though at some point it became void, there was gross darkness, there was emptiness. Oh, no, 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 no. He knew that that's not it. He knew how he started. He started with God. God, God started with God. <laughs> so he knew what to do was not to panic or to begin to say, hey, ha, ah, no. The Bible says he called light out of that darkness. Why? Because even darkness is working for him. Because it's scripted. Are you guys getting it? It's scripted. It's scripted. So he called light. He said, let there be light. Allow light be. Allow it. Let it come into, into formation. And then we began to see God create things. And you know the beautiful thing is when you allow God begin with you or begin the year for you or begin, you know, you know the year with you, you can be sure that what he begins, what he starts with you, will outlive you, will uh, be sustainable, and would pass through time and season. I mean, look at Genesis chapter 1. Everything God created is still in existence till today. Thousands of years after, we are still unraveling it. That is what it means when you co-partner with God at the beginning. When you let him begin for you. Through his word, you begin to speak his word into existence. The creative ability of God. When you say the creative ability of God, the raw material he uses is his word. That's why he says that all things were made. All things. Can you begin to declare that and say, all things in 2024 concerning my life is made by the word. My January through December is made by the word. That's how I begin. I'm beginning in the word. I'm going through it in the word. I'm ending in the word. Nothing will be made that is not made through the word. I don't want victories that is not word certified. No, 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 no. Everything I'm going to engage with in 2024 is going to be by the word. And that word is both the written word and the Zoe word. The Zoe, the very life. That's why it says this, this uh, 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 in him was life and the life was the light of men. So it gives light. I begin to see my path. I begin to connect the dots and I begin to understand what God is doing with me and through me. In the beginning, God. Remember the first one we said was what having a mind shift. Understanding that your life is scripted. Understanding that your life has been sorted and settled ever before you showed up on the scene. Your duty is to navigate it with the help of the Holy Ghost. That's what it means to turn the pages. And then I'm saying that you begin with God. You begin with God. Now that you know that he's got the script. And I said it concerning Jesus. Remember I said the second point. He had to begin with God. He went to the river Jordan and ensured that the father confirmed with him until he got that word. He didn't step out. He didn't step out. The father had to confirm, you know, and he said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. And once he got that confirmation, the rest is history. He began to ride. I mean, he, he rode on the wings of that word all through, all through his three and a half years doing ministry. And then we began to see the effect of his, of his 17 years in the making. God cooking him, or was he 18 years? God cooking him. So to engage with the creative ability of God, you begin with God. You begin with God, and then you allow the word. Because it says nothing is made that was not made through the word of God. It's not a season to begin to uh, casualize the word of God. 
or to begin to, and for you to, you know, have the creative ability of God's word, that means you know the word. That means you're going to spend time with the word, both the word written and the word Jesus as a person. So it's not a time not to have a personal relationship with God. And if you're listening to me and you don't have that or you had that, but it's not quite like it, I'm praying for grace for you this year because it's the easiest pathway to victory in 2024. You and I don't even know what is in 2024, but we know the one that holds 2024. We know the one that has the script. So why not just lean on him, submit totally to him and let him guide us into 2024. But for us to be guided and led in 2024, there has to be a sync between us and God. There has to be some sort of a connection. We need to be able to hear when he's instructing us and not just hear, but obey, listen, yield to the instruction. Because sometimes the instructions won't make sense, but it will make spirit. The third thing I want to say, you know, you find it in Hebrews chapter one, verse 10. It says, you, Lord, in the beginning, laid the foundation of the earth. Foundations are laid at the beginning. Like I said, what God created at the beginning till today, thousands of years, he didn't go back to go and recreate it. Rather, what he created has been reproducing, has been reproducing after its own kind. That is the creative ability of God, that he will begin something with you and that thing, oh, will have the multiplier effect in your life such that your children, children's children, children will benefit as a result of that foundation he laid. So foundation is important. How are you laying the foundation? Because how you lay the foundation at the beginning will determine what the year will look like. And you will see how that ties into my fourth point and my final point. Foundation laying. There's nothing, you know, uh, more, more, more serious than laying the right foundation. And like the first two points I've said is like laying the foundation, having the right mindset understanding the outlook of 2024, not running helter skelter, not, not chasing, you know, doing the rat race and chasing every wind of doctrine and running here. What's the apostle Sema saying? Oh, what's the apostle this one saying? Oh, what's this one saying? As good as listening to everyone is, you need to now settle down yourself and say, God, what are you saying? What are you saying to me? Seeing through everything you've heard, laying the foundation at the beginning he says, oh Lord, in the beginning, lay the foundation. That's what God does in the beginning. He lays foundation. Why do we need to lay foundation? Foundation is what holds everything together. Foundation is what holds everything together. And your foundation determines how high you're going. I've said it before, and I'm sure a lot of us know this. If you're building a, 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 a bungalow, the foundation is different from when you're building a three floors or when you're building a skyscraper. A foundation is different. When we talk about the beginning laying foundation, you need to understand. Psalm 127 verse 7 says, Except the Lord builds the house, the labor in vain. So except the Lord begins with you, lays the foundation with you. Ah, May we not labor in vain in Jesus' name. May we not labor in vain in Jesus' name. May the Lord help us. May the Lord keep us. May the Lord guide us. May we be instructed by the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. When the foundation is laid, it remains true. It remains steadfast. And even when everything else fails, it stands secure. Remember what he said. He said, the man that built his house, he said he dug deep. He found the rock and then he built there. So the wind came, the wind blew, the rain fell. But the house that was built on the rock stood steadfast. When you lay the right foundation, when the vicissitude of life comes in the course of the year, because you can't expect it not to come. He didn't assure us that we wouldn't be have trials. No. But our lives will attract it. After Jesus received that foundation in Jordan, what was the next thing that happened? <laughs> the Bible says the Holy Spirit led him into the wilderness. 
to be tempted of the devil. So the Holy Spirit knew why, what was going to happen to him. He so it wasn't like the Holy Spirit didn't know the devil was there waiting for him. To be tempted of the devil. But when he overcame that 40 days, by the time he showed up, oh, the Bible says that the news of him spread abroad without billboard, without uh, uh, Facebook adverts. The news of him spread abroad. You need this mindset also for your business. You need it also for your marriage, for raising your children. Lay the right foundation. And that foundation is Christ. The Bible says no other foundation can you lay other than that which is laid, which is Christ. When the foundation is laid properly. Let's see what 1 Corinthians chapter 3 says. I want to show us quickly the effect of, you know, laying a good foundation. What that does is that whatever you build on it will stay. It will stay. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. And I'm reading from verse 10. It says, according to the grace of God, which was given to me as a wise master builder. This is Paul. He says, I've laid the foundation and another builds on it, but let each one take it how he builds on it. You know, and this would tie us into the fourth one. How do you now build on this foundation? It's your choice. But when the foundation is laid, one thing is guaranteed, your life is secured. Now, the outcomes might differ. That is dependent on how you now build on that foundation. The outcomes might differ. That's why even on the good soil, some had 100, some had 60, some had 30. Even though it was the same good soil. How you build on it, the outcomes may be different. He now says, he said, let each one take heed. And I'm going to show you how you take heed in building on it. He says, for no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Christ Jesus. Fantastic. That's what we've said in the first three, three points. Having the right mindset, starting with God, laying the foundation. That's what we've said. He now says, now if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will become clear. It will be revealed by fire. And the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. If anyone's work which he has built on it endures, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved. That is the <laughs> effect of the right foundation. That even the one that builds with straw or hay, even though fire burns it, he says that the person will still be saved. But I don't even want that category, God forbid. And I'm not praying that for any of us, either of us here. We are asking that we build with gold, with silver. That's the precious stones. That's what we want to build on. Those are the results we want to have in 2024. That's what the foundation is laid right, but we want to build accurately. We want to build properly. We want to build on it. It says, let everyone take it, how he builds on it. And that brings me to 1 John chapter 2, verse 24. Let's look at that as I tie this up. Wow. First John chapter 2. Are you being blessed at all? I believe you are. I believe you are being blessed. First John uh, chapter 2 verse 24. What does this say quickly? And then you can just pray for a few minutes and we can tie it up. So it says, therefore... Let that abide in you, which you heard from the beginning. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you also will abide in the Son and in the Father. So this is the crux of the matter. When you begin, when you start, it doesn't stop there. It has to abide. That's where the problem is. And that's why I'm not advocating for New Year resolutions. 
But how you build, having the first three rights is a 90% guarantee that it will abide. John was saying here, he says, therefore, let that abide in you, which you heard from the beginning. Don't start and then get distracted. Let it abide. Tell yourself, it will abide. As I begin with you, the energy that I begin with at the beginning of the year, it will abide. It will abide. Tell yourself, it will abide. It's so important to let it abide. He says, let that abide. I like the word let. Let means allow it. That means it's in your power. You're in control of it. It's not one angel that will come. See, in as much as 2024 is sorted, prepared, script written, you've got a role to play. God is not just going to throw it on your laps. You are going to be actively involved because God is not raising lazy songs. He's not raising songs, wishful songs. He is raising songs who are hardworking. And I'm not talking about sweating and laboring. They are hardworking from a place of rest. Why do I say rest? Because the work is completed. It's finished. You know that scripture that says the plowman shall overtake the reaper? Realize that they are both actively involved in the, in the field. One is plowing, that is still trying to plant his seed. Another is harvesting. They are actively working. He didn't say the one chilling under the tree and sipping zobo will overtake the reaper. No, they are both actively working. They are both actively involved. And God says, yes, I can make the plowman overtake the reaper. Not the one crossing his leg under the hut in his house, chilling. So you've got a role to play. He says, abide, let it abide. That which you received in the beginning, commit to it abiding. That's the issue. Let it abide. Let it dwell. Let it make room in your heart, in your life. Let it find expression. Don't, 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 don't be like, the person James was trying to explain in, in, in the Bible that looks at himself in the mirror and then forgets what he looks like. No, he says we are the ones that allow the word. We, 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 we are not one of those ones. We, are, we allow the word to gain expression through us, to find expression through us, to gain roots, to, 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 to you know, stretch out. You know those trees that just extend everywhere? Uh -huh. Let it abide. That which you receive from the beginning. Make a commitment to continuous flow of God's grace, of God's abiding grace. Don't do vacation. Don't do vacation with God. Abide. You started with him. Abide. Don't be in a haste. Because you've not seen results, then you jettison him. No, abide. Abide. When you abide, you experience miracles. Remember Jesus and the disciples on their way to Emmaus. The Bible says, you know, you well know the story was talking. They didn't know it was him. And when they got to the town where they were going to, Jesus acted like as if he was going further. They said, abide with us tonight. Ah, may Christ abide with you. May he dwell. May he find your place, your room, your heart, roomy. When he says abide, that means you need to declutter. Declutter. Remove bitterness. Remove anxiousness. Remove, you know, all those things that clog the space you've made for him. Make room. Let him abide. Let him, let him find. You know how it is when you go to someone's house that you are familiar with. You, you, you feel at home. It will make room for you. He says, abide with us. And in abiding with them, he broke bread with them. Their eyes opened and they saw 
that it was Jesus. They experienced an encounter, a miracle. Lastly, in talking about this abiding, is a popular verse we're familiar with, and that's John chapter 15. And we're going to use that to tie this up. Oh, wow. Glory to God. Abide. To abide means to stay, to nurture, to rest in. It's not, it's not, it's not Pajawiri blessing. What you receive at the beginning sometimes is the seed. So you take time to nurture it. You take time to plant it. You take time to, to let it settle in, sink in, rest in. Don't be in a hurry. That's how you begin. John 15 verse 1. It says, I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that he may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. Stop doing vacations in Christ. Abide. Make your home and let him make his home. Jesus said to his disciples, he said, I and my father will come and make our home with you. In you, we would, we would abide with you. When I come to make my home in you, you know, for example, someone like me relocating from Nigeria to, to, to UK, this is my home now. I visit Nigeria now. This is my home. And when I say this is my home, I make it my home. I'm not here. Uh, uh, um, they're dreaming about Nigeria every day. I wish, I wish, I wish. I would never really enjoy what is here for me if I keep thinking that way. So my job, my duty is to abide, is to stay here, make room, make a great adventures. You're going on a jolly ride with God. Enjoy the journey. Enjoy the trip. Don't be too much in a hurry. Lord, give me husband, give me husband. January, husband has not come. February, husband has not come. You are not having palpitations. Enjoy the journey with him. If he has told you your life is sorted in 2024, then enjoy it. Abide. Rest in. Nurture it. You know, enjoy the juice of that relationship with God. It's funny that sometimes our relationship with God is very transactional. It's not an enduring one. It's about give me, give me, give me. That's the only time we are talking to God. That's the only time we're having conversations with him. When we need something, when we need breakthroughs, when we need him to come through for us. Is that all that God is in our life? No, he wants to abide. He wants you to abide. He says that which you have received from the beginning. Let it abide. When he abides, then you, you know when it is when you put something in in, in, in water or in something and you leave it for a while. It's like when you marinate something, it, 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 the juice goes in. That's what God wants to do with you in 2024. He says, unless you abide in me, he says, I'm the vine, you are the branch. He who abides in me, this is what happens to him. And I in him, what does he say? He says, it's bear much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Oh, Barry. We can't do nothing. Absolutely nothing without him so abide in him i want you to just pray in a few minutes and say lord help me with these four things help me number one i want the right mind shift help me see that truly 2024 is sorted in you that my life is sorted in you in christ and that i've got my 2024 figured out in you and I'm going to trust you. And that in the name of Jesus, I begin the year. I begin this new phase. I begin this new season in God with you. I lay the right foundation. And I'm building rightly on it. I'm building with gold, with silver, with precious stone. I'm not building with hay or straw. I am conscious. I'm actively building. I'm an active participant on this journey. It's not a quiet journey. We are working hand in hand. We're working together in the name of Jesus. And then I will abide. 
as you begin with me, I abide. The word is giving me for the year, I abide. I let it abide. I let it sink in. I nurture it so that I can bear much fruit. So that it can be evident to all. Glory to God. I thank you, Father, for you help me through this. I begin with you. 2024 is your year. I receive all that you have written, scripted, proposed, because I know that your thoughts towards me are good. And I receive it with thanksgiving in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Congratulations and happy new year in advance. Welcome to 2024. Whatever it is, God has named that year for you. I'm praying that you will see God all through the year. You'll see him on four things. You'll have the right mindset. You choose to abide and stay with him so that we can all see and it can be evident that God indeed began with you, walked through it with you, and has brought you to completion in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much for joining me this morning. My plan was to finish at one. And yes, that's one UK time. And uh, yes, and just a little over by eight minutes, but I believe it was worth it. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm praying the best of God for you in the year 2024. And I'm asking God that, you know, uh, these four things that I've shared with you will be affected in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Feel free to share this link with your friends, your family. I believe that there were really some touch points that we touched, touched on and that would be beneficial to someone. And of course, don't forget to follow me on Pimo Secrets, Juicy Conversations coming next year by the grace of God in Jesus' name. Happy New Year, darlings. Happy New Year, everyone. Thank you, everyone. I can see all your comments. God bless you. Have a fantastic rest of the year, and I'll see you in the new year with God's full glory on display in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. I love you all. God bless you. Thank you.